Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to focus on one of the brain's most essential functions, the way it searches through its vast network of knowledge. Your brain stores information in a graph, a vast tangled web of nodes connected by relationships. Each node is a concept like dog or Fido, or the shape of an object. Each relationship captures a meaning like is a, has a, or does or belongs to. A node might represent an image like this image of the letter R, with relationships to the various arcs and corners which make it up. The concepts and searches are the same. In this video, I'll show you how to search such a graph structure and why it can be so efficient. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. Beyond AI, I've developed software for neurological test instruments and neural simulators. I created the Future AI Society to explore how neuroscience can inform smarter, more human-like AI. I'm using our open source brain simulator projects for simulations and demonstrations throughout this video series. And if you want to experiment on your own, you can download the Brain Simulator 3 from GitHub and try it out. If you are interested in this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. In AI, knowledge graphs have been around for decades, but the graph in your brain adds powerful features. First, most relationships can be followed in either direction. If Fido is a dog, that also means the set of dogs includes Fido. Second, knowledge is inherited. Fido doesn't need a separate entry for breathing or walking on four legs. These properties come built in from dog and animal above it because Fido is a dog and dog is an animal. But has relationships are also inheritable. If your arms have elbows and you have arms, you also have elbows. And third, the graph makes room for exceptions. If most birds fly, the ostrich still counts as a bird, even though it doesn't. Reverse links, inheritance, and exceptions. These give the brain the flexibility it needs for common sense. And I'll show you why they are essential to the way your brain searches for information. And because your brain is essential to your well-being, it is always searching. Every second of your waking life, it is finding, matching, and expanding nodes in its web. Of the many kinds of searches, it might perform two stand out as fundamental. The first is the perceptual search, answering the question, what am I seeing, hearing, or experiencing right now? The second is the attribute recall, answering the question, now that I know what this is, what else do I know about it? Picture yourself walking into a room. Your eyes pick up edges, colors, shadows, textures. Your ears register faint sounds of motion or conversation. All of this is raw input. It's useless until your brain begins the real work of perceptual search. Each of these features sparks activity in associated neurons. One detects straight lines, another responds to motion, another to a certain pitch of sound. But this activity doesn't stay isolated. It spreads like sparks racing outward across a web of information following relationships in the reverse direction. Candidate nodes begin to glow. Four legs, wagging tail, maybe a dog. Pointy ears and whiskers, maybe a cat. Dark wooden surface, maybe a table. Dozens of hypotheses compete in parallel and recognition happens when one cluster of neurons reinforces itself strongly enough that the brain converges on, this is Fido. To accommodate inheritance, this kind of search follows inheritable relationships in the reverse direction. You begin with the attributes you can sense directly. These might enter the graph at any level, some at the general physical object, 
some at dog, and some specific to Fido. The attributes you see in the moment, legs, fur, motion, are mostly not unique to Fido. They belong to whole categories he's part of. By narrowing downward, the brain resolves general features into specific recognition. Notice a few things about this search. Not very many relationships need to be traversed. Even in a huge graph, only that portion of the graph which relates directly to the input needs to be checked. For this search, your brain never needs to search upwards. If your input attribute points to a dog, you never need to search animal or other living thing. You are always following relationships in the reverse of the direction shown by the arrows in my diagrams. As a quick demonstration, here's how this works in the Brain Simulator 3. If we give the system some attributes such as has four legs, the system will respond with everything which has four legs along with a confidence factor. If we add the requirement that it also has a collar, now we're just getting Fido and Fifi as good matches. If we further add that this thing can bark, Fido comes up as the clear winner. Perceptual search is not something you turn on and off. It's continuous every waking second. It is translating sensory chaos into meaningful categories. Without it, your world would collapse into a flood of meaningless colors, sounds, and textures. Recognition, though, is only the beginning. When you recognize Fido, your brain estimates his position relative to yourself so you can add him to your local mental model, and we'll cover that in a future video. Then your brain immediately launches a new search. Attribute recall, to get the attributes of Fido which you can't sense directly right now. In this search, connections radiate upward and outward following the direction of the arrows. Fido is a dog, Fido has brown fur, Fido bites, and dogs have four legs. Dogs bark, dogs are animals, and animals need food. Attribute recall moves recursively upward in the graph. From Fido, your brain can climb recursively toward dog and animal, pulling in more and more inherited attributes, which include the attributes of the original search. These facts aren't stored uniquely in Fido's node, they come from the categories he belongs to. But they may be important to how you and Fido are going to interact right now. So, while perceptual search finds a node, attribute recall fans out and climbs the ancestors. Together they answer the two most important questions the brain faces all the time, what is this? And what else do I need to know about it? And like the perceptual search, the attribute recall searches a tiny fraction of the total graph. There might be a dozen levels of is a relationships above Fido and your brain might encounter numerous attributes of Fido which are not relevant at the moment. But in my simulations, these levels can be handled at four milliseconds each, so your brain can search exhaustively for all the attributes of anything in a small fraction of a second. The attributes your brain recalls aren't just factual. Some are conditional, some are relate to cause and effect. So your brain can use these to predict what might happen next, one of your brain's most valuable abilities, which we'll discuss in a future video. In the brain simulator, this type of search is handled in a separate tab where you can put in a node such as Fido and immediately get all the attributes of Fido with confidence values. You can also filter these results so you could ask for the color of Fido by asking what are the attributes of Fido which are descendants of the color node. The magic happens when these two searches run together. You recognize a face in a crowd, that's perceptual. Then you recall their name, your last conversation, and whether you still owe them an email, that's attribute recall. 
You can picture waves of neuronal activity coursing through your brain. It's initiated by your perception of various attributes. From these nodes, neuronal activity fans out in a wave to all the connected nodes until some set of nodes have most of the attributes. Now your brain shifts gears because the attribute recall search runs through a similar relationships, but in the other direction. Now, instead of searching based on fur color and size and finding Fido, you're starting from Fido and finding fur color and size and a host of other attributes, many of which you can't see, but are important. Of course, these are not the only searches your brain can perform. There are problem solving searches. There are creative searches. And there are language searches where you sift for just the right word, the right grammar, and the right phrase. But perceptual searches and attribute recall are the bedrock. They are the foundation on which the others stand. Searching your brain is not like searching Google, and it's not like querying a database. It is navigating a graph sometimes downwards into details, sometimes upward into inheritance, always alive with context. Two searches dominate this process, the perceptual search which answers, what is this? And the attribute recall which answers, what else do I know about it? The Future AI Society is developing software which demonstrates these searches and many other brain-like activities. I hope you'll join us on this journey toward building AI, which doesn't just process information, but actually understands it. If you'd like to follow along, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. Then try out the software and join the community for free to participate in our online video conversations and our Discord server. Check out the links below. And as always, thanks for watching.